Let's talk about evidence of evolution. So biogeography, what that means is that there are patterns and distributions of organisms um, based on where they are actually living. They are closely related, um, but they might, they have differences in their maybe appearance or adaptations because they live in different environments. You can see these are the Darwin finches, finches and these birds live on the Galapagos Islands and they live in very different uh, geographical areas. So this top left bird, you can see this one probably lives where there's lots of seeds and hard nuts to crack open. This one down here probably lives where there's a lot of insects. These are still very closely related, but they have become different species because of the area that they live in, their biogeography. Fossils are also part of the evidence for evolution. They show organisms changing slowly over time. So back here we have, well, let's start here. In the very most recent time, here's humans, Homo sapiens. And then here is a very closely related um, Neanderthal. And then we go back and it gets a little more, okay, this is probably not a Homo sapien, but it's something that is related to us very distantly back in time. And it's probably related to him and him. And then we keep going back. This guy is related. And then back farther, related, farther, farther, back in time. You can see how the skulls change as they go back in time. Just a little bit of a change each time. But then when you look at the distance here, look at this one. This is the human skull, Homo sapien. It's got a very large area for the brain. Then you go back here, and that has a much smaller area for the brain. This species might be 4 million years ago, 3.5 million years ago. We do not come from monkeys. No, no, we don't. Some people like to say that in response to the theory of evolution, but that is not what we're saying. Monkeys are somewhere down the line here with us, okay? Um, we They just took a different branch, and I think the next slide shows us that. Okay, so here are... Um, right here, the human lineage of the chimp lineage splits about 7 million years ago. So this is where it split off. Here is the chimpanzee and humans are up here. Okay, so we are closely related to chimps, but we are farther away from the gorillas, so they are not as like us, but still they are more closely related than orangutans are or than gibbons are. So the farther away on this chart, the more distantly related we are. Okay, so another part of uh, evidence for evolution is that homologous body structures, that's the H, um, homo means same, so same body structures, but they have a different, okay, they started from the same embryonic tissue, but they turn into a different structure. So we'll look at this yellow tissue here. This tissue as an embryo was the same as this tissue, this tissue, this tissue but look at how it helps these animals differently. That's the human forearm, the cat, it's part of the leg here, the whale, it's part of the flipper, and then the bat, it's part of the wing. These phalanges for humans, the fingers, 
are part of the whole foot for the cat, the whale flipper, the bat wing. So they start as the same, but they end up different. Analogous means they start different, but end up looking the same. So they, as embryonic tissues, it's different tissue that they started with, but they end up kind of doing the same job for it. So we've got a wing of a bat, a butterfly wing, and a bird wing. Try to remember homo means same, so it started as the same embryonic tissue, and then different embryonic tissue is analogous. Vestigial, these are kind of fun. This is part of a body that is still there, but it has reduced itself to a point that it doesn't have a function anymore. It hasn't totally disappeared through time because it doesn't actually pose a threat to the species. So humans, we have wisdom teeth, appendix, and ear muscles. They're just a vestigial structure. We do not use them anymore and or need them. So they just are kind of there, but for no reason. The legs of a skink is another one. Here we have a leg of a skink and another leg. They look like snakes, but they're not. Okay. And the skink has found like over time that it didn't really need its legs. The legs were kind of a hindrance to it. So they've gotten smaller and smaller. The whale here has a actually back leg bones. This is why whales, the ancestors of whales were thought to have walked on land, started on the land and then slowly made their way to the sea uh, gradually through changes over time. And so this proves that the ancestors to whales did actually walk on land. Here is the back leg part. It actually has a, a ball and socket like our hip bones do. Okay, more evidence is that embryos of different animals with backbones develop in very similar ways. You can see this, this is the early embryon, embryonic tissue. We've got the lizard, tortoise, pig, human. They all start out with a long tail, the backbone, the head kind of looks the same. And then as it goes through its development, it starts to look different from each other. But they do start out very, very similar. Humans actually, see the tail there? Um, that tail becomes this, the spine, okay? And it slowly recedes, this tail does. Now sometimes, sometimes people are born with a little knob down there. And sometimes people are born with an actual full tail. Um, and sometimes they can have it taken off and sometimes they can't. So um, that's something you'll learn a little bit more about later on. Okay, the genetics. All organisms. Genetics is a big factor in showing evidence that evolution has, has occurred. So all organisms have the universal genetic code. The DNA um, is made up of A, T, G, and C, which is adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. All organisms have genes and proteins that are similar in structure and function in almost all living things. So that's showing that somewhere back in time, everything might have the same um, distant ancestors. And that's why we think all living species on Earth really are related in some way, shape, or form.